Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where myself and Alex aim to answer your tech-related, bike-related questions. You can submit your questions down below using the hashtag AskGCNTech in the comments section, and we'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible in the allotted time. So without <laughs> further ado, who have we got first? Alex? First up is Fred Batterson. He says, hi chaps, great videos. I am six foot three and on my Canyon Ultimate large bike. He finds that the handlebars are slightly too low for his saddle height for it to be comfortable. And it's quite low when he goes down onto the drops on the handlebars. Mm. He's already got the standard spacer and some other spaces underneath, but what are his options? Does he have to buy another fork or what else could he do? Well, uh, yeah, it sounds like your bike is just a little bit too small for you and you have identified the problem. So it might be worth you get a, well, the, 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 the size, size bigger. Up. Yeah. Also, the Ultimate's a pretty aggressive racing geometry frame. So the Endurace frame that, that Canyon does is essentially an Ultimate, but it's just got like... Slightly more relaxed it's, geometry. Yeah, it's got a higher stack on the front. Yeah. So you could run the same sort of bike but with no spaces and it would be higher. But if he wanted to get his current bike to fit, he's got a couple of options. If you can't put any more spaces underneath the stem, you could switch to a separate stem and handlebar. That way you could have a positive angle stem, so one that faces upwards. Mm. Or if the steerer has been cut quite short on your bike, you could look to get another set of forks that's got a longer steerer, then you can get your position dialed in and then cut your steerer. Or, other option, <laughs> take up yoga. That's that. free. Yeah. Um, yeah, but they're, they're, they're your options. Next up is from Tobias Nacken, who says, what's faster, latex inner tubes or tubeless tires? Ooh. Right, so there's been quite a few independent tests on this recently. There's quite a few people that look at this. The absolute fastest setups tend to be from, at the moment, a specialist time trial tire fitted with a latex tube and they're clincher tires. Yeah but you're not going to want to use those all the time. There's quite a lot of disadvantages. They don't last long. They don't really have any puncture protection. That's kind of what makes them fast. Yeah. So if you're looking for all round use and a tire that's you know, better for all round, it's going to last you longer, is more cost effective and grips better in the wet and in corners and stuff, tubeless tires are the best all rounders. Yeah. The, but, like the performance tubeless tires from the top brands. But the, the fastest tubeless setup to the fastest like latex in a tube setup, they're fairly comparable. They're pretty close, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, yeah, there's not much in it at all. Next You're question. hairs. Yeah. Next question is from Roy Patience. Says, yes. Hello, GCN Tech crew from Down Under. I'm looking at buying a set of carbon wheels. So my question is the performance difference marginal between carbon spokes and normal spokes. Says they do like riding up the mountains and downhill afterwards. I wonder if carbon spokes are worth the investment. Hmm. What do you think? Um, it's tough to call really because the difference between normal spokes and carbon spokes is pretty small. Yes, a wheel made with carbon spokes is going to be slightly lighter and they do offer a slightly different ride feel and characteristics. Using carbon spokes, you can build a very laterally stiff wheel, so that's side to side movement. Um, but there is going to be a price premium to pay for that. Personally, I would, I would quite strongly question whether I needed to spend the extra cash because I think the performance advantage is quite slim. But mm. if you want to save every gram possible and have the very best or you know the nicest feeling thing, then I think the carbon spokes are worth it. Yeah. But, yeah. In terms of aerodynamics, it's the shape of the spoke. Yeah. And so on older carbon spokes, on older wheels from, I don't know, sort of five, six years ago mm -hmm. and beyond, they tended to have quite, they were quite chunky, yeah. which actually made them slower because that they're much less aerodynamic. Now modern carbon spokes, like the ones that were on the Windspace wheels or the Cadex wheels that we've, we've featured, they are much narrower and slimmer and yeah. up there with the lightest and most aero spokes that are alloy from say like DT Swiss. And serviceable as well, those yeah. new carbon ones, you can replace those, whereas before it was like a, a bonded in section, so. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, next question is from Donald Rice, who says, how do y'all? Uh, there are some professional gravel racers who are advocating the use of foam inserts in their tires. And he's put the American and English spelling oh, of thanks. tires. <laughs> Cheers. They're saying that the inserts allow them to, to run ridiculously low pressures of around 15 to 25 PSI. A pressure's that low, would you worry about the tyre slipping off the rim? No, don't worry about your tyres coming off. Um, 15 to 25 PSI, you should be about right. If you've got that larger volume gravel bike tyre, it should be more than okay. Plus, if you've got 
that tyre liner inside, you've got the added bonus of that's also going to apply a little bit of pressure onto the tyre bead and help hold that in place as well. Although, I would be careful and mindful of going much lower than about 15 PSI. You're getting mm. into the realms of really, really soft tyres. So then the tyre will roll around and deform a lot. And that's when you need to be careful. It's when the tyre rolls almost underneath the rim. That's where you need to watch out for the bead coming loose. But yeah, the other thing to be wary of with tyre liners is the um, well, foam inserts, is mm. the rolling resistance penalty of them. Yeah. So, for example, if you were riding something like Strada Bianchi, which we did recently, and that race is well, it's on GCN Plus, um, then for that, I wouldn't feel the need to run no. tyre liners because the puncture risk on that kind of gravel is low and there's a lot of tarmac. Mm. So, like, you want the lower rolling resistance for the tarmac because you really feel it. Mm. But then there's those other tyre liners that you can get now, like the ones from Vittoria, where yeah. it compresses in into oh, the... Oh, yeah, like the run-flat system. Yeah, yeah. the run-flat system. So the pressure in the tyre then causes the tyre liner to like compress into sort of the bead, um, into the bottom of the wheel. So it's like not affecting the tyre. It's not pushing up against the car. Closed, closed cell foam that is. Yeah, mm. and then when it loses pressure because of a puncture, the foam then expands. Mm. Um, they don't have a rolling resistance penalty. Just something to think about. Okay, next question in. They say, hi GCN gang, love your work. I've got a question about tyre sizes, please. How do I select the most optimised tyre for my wheel? Assuming I have a 26mm external width and a 23mm internal width, should I get a 26mm tyre or a 23 or something else altogether? What's, uh, what's our advice? Well, it depends on what they mean by optimising their tyres. Are they optimising them for aerodynamics or for comfort? I think based on, yeah, if, if you're sort of optimising it for aerodynamics, if tyres often aren't the, the width that they the manufacturers say, it can often differ. Yeah. So the best thing to do is to just mount the tyre on the wheel and just see what it's sitting at and yeah, the, the rule of thumb for aerodynamics and deep section carbon wheels is you want the tyre to kind of run flush in line um, and uh, with the wheel rim and not sort of mushroom bulb out. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting yeah. for aero. But in terms of if you want to optimise for comfort, you just want to have a slightly larger volume tyre. So the, up in the regions of like 28 or 30 mil tyre. It's not going to be aero, but it will give you that larger volume so you can run a slightly lower pressure and then you'll be more comfortable. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, next question is from Signal, who says, Hi GCN team, uh, if you have the right chain length on your bike with a short cage rear derailleur, do you need to resize the chain if you change to a long cage rear derailleur, assuming you're keeping the same front and rear gears? Ah, oh, that's interesting. I also... Maybe if you go to like a, um, an oversized pulley wheel system yeah, as well. So... If you're moving from a short cage um, derailleur to a long cage one, everything's the same. Yes, you are going to need to resize your chain because the overall length and distance that that chain is running has, has increased. I mean, if your chain is slightly on the long side, you'll probably be okay to get away with it. But if you've got your chain exactly the correct length to start with, yeah, you're going to need to have a slightly longer chain. Yeah, chain. it's the kind of thing where you'll probably find that you'll put your wheel back in your bike and you'll go and it'll work. Yeah. And you'll, you'll think, oh, I'm getting away with it. And, but you're just not going to have optimum shifting. No. So, just that. But I've got to say, in terms of their questions asking about the benefits of oversized pulley wheels, that's a different thing to a long cage rear derailleur. Yeah. There's n they're not the same things. Oversized no. pulley wheels, Completely different principle to a long cage rear derailleur. Yeah. Mm. Uh, next question is from Gary Coronado, mm. who says, Hi, Ollie. Um, my question is, since I'm planning to get a direct drive trainer, how do I clean the cassette that's attached to the trainer? I know it won't be as dirty as the one being used outdoors, but I assume some grit would build up on that particular cassette in the future. Well, what, what you just do is just get your uh, hose pipe and just hose down the hole <laughs> direct trainer, usually when it's plugged in to the wall. Uh, no, don't do that. <laughs> my, do you want my advice for this? Yeah, go for it. Even though he didn't ask for my advice. Okay. So my advice would be get a little bit of degreaser, spray it onto an old cloth or rag, and then you can clean the cassette, like put it in between all the sprockets, shimmy it left and right, or the best option is just to completely remove the cassette off of the trainer then you can clean it thoroughly with a brush degreaser, wash it off with some water, dry it, and then refill it. Yeah, uh, essential tools to own as a cyclist include 
a lock ring cassette tool yeah. and a chain whip. Yeah. Like they're essentials. I would definitely recommend adding them. You'll you'll use them. Please, really good. please don't hose your direct. Yeah, charge please chain. don't do that. Yeah, don't. Um, Tice Hatton says, "Hi guys, I'm looking at getting an integrated bar stem and handlebars and some carbon 50 millimeter Ooh. wheels." Nice upgrades. Yeah, right um, what would you say the amount of watts these would save me? I'm 55 kilograms. Love the videos. Thanks for entertaining me every afternoon. Well, I'm going to say it's going to be near impossible to give an exact number of watts that it's going to save somebody. There's so many variables. We don't know their current setup. We don't know what wheels they're going to go. We don't know the tyres. So there's loads of different variables. But in most instances, upgrading to a 50 mil set of carbon wheels is going to give a significant advantage in lots of different areas when you're riding your bike. It's going to be a good upgrade. And if you include some lightweight tyres in the tubes, that's also going to make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same. It's, it's a how long is a piece of string question, unfortunately. Um, so it's sort of impossible to answer. But you will you will be more aerodynamic than you were before. As Alex says, you will be faster. I'm a little bit intrigued how we're entertaining you every single afternoon because we don't put a video out every single Maybe afternoon. Maybe they watch them again. Do you go around his house on the days we don't put videos out? Yeah, I just ride around in the garden. Yeah, it's entertaining. Yeah, he's in like, wheelies. He's like, Alex, just, my gears don't work. What do I do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Telling him jokes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, onto cool. the other. Well, there's the other part of his question as well. Oh, the handlebars. Oh, and the so handlebars, onto the integrated yeah. handlebars. Uh, the aerodynamic advantage from having an integrated handlebars with hidden cables is a fairly small advantage. There is one, but it's not major. The big advantage from setting up your handlebars comes from the position that it puts your body in. Mm. In fact, it's actually made a really cool video about getting comfy on the bike and how you can use your handlebars to optimise your position. And then we also touch briefly on aerodynamics on that. Yes, as well. and the other thing that I would suggest you do when you upgrade those handlebars and, and is, go, is go a bit narrower. Mm. It's going to make a big difference. But again, don't go too narrow to the point no. where you're like, you know, you look like <laughs> Donkey Kong in Mario Kart. Yeah. Like, if, you know. Wheels will make a big difference. Handlebars, they will, but not, not quite as impressive. Mm. That was our last question of this week's Tech Night, wasn't it? Yeah, sorry if we've not got around to answering your question this week, but some great questions this week. Um, if we haven't, just keep firing them down. Hopefully, we'll eventually get to it. So, down in the comments, hashtag AskGCN Tech, and we'll see you for another one. Don't forget to subscribe if you uh, don't want to miss an episode and you like what we do. Hmm. Bye! Right, I'm off to go around that guy's house. Yes. He said he's bored. Tice. Yeah. Tice Hatton. All right, see you in a bit. <laughs>